This is Aisha, one half of this podcast. This is Lexi, the other half of the podcast. You're you're speaking very sensually. You're just you're, like, I'm staring at you with your weird <laughs> my hoodie on. And your the hood house up. is so cold. It is it's like a freezer in here. Like it's why can't you cold. just keep your house at a normal temperature? Because because Ross doesn't like it when it's warm. Except for when his best friend's here and then he sw- like literally his goal is to sweat us out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That is really weird. When Jamie's here, he's always like, Are you cold? Are you warm? Do you need do you want me to turn the heat on? And I'm like, What about me? Yeah, we're just we're just gonna freeze to death. It's fine. Anyway, welcome back to Sisters Waiting Romance. This is week three of January. So this month's month's theme is, is physical it? TBR. I thought this is week four. No, because, oh no, you're right. It is week four. Because there's five weeks. Because there's five weeks, and next week is week I five. I was like, do yeah, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah, find yeah. another book for January? No, no, no. You're was... right. I fe- bitten feels like so long ago, but it actually wasn't that long ago. Um, okay. No, this is week four. You're right. This is week four of physical TBR, and this week we did in the weeds by B. K. Borison, and it was my pick. I had this on my shelf. Um, okay. Tropes. What I didn't... Oh, no, I do have that. Second Chance. Yeah. One Night Stand. Sure. Does that count? If it wasn't, like, technically in this book? I mean, technically there's so is. many freaking, like, flashback moments in this book, though. Yeah, there is. Um, um, Grumpy Sunshine. Oh, yeah, that's... I didn't have that. Why did I not have that? I don't know. Why didn't I have one? Uh, Force Proximity. Yeah, but he kind of put that on himself. I mean, on purpose. Did he? Was it on purpose? Um, I have like Beckett. I don't want to say on the spectrum, but like definitely anxiety. He, anxiety. He definitely has stimulation issues. Yeah, which is why I was like, maybe he probably is somewhere on the spectrum. I I just got the sense like they they never confirmed that in the book. Besides that he, like, does have anxiety, but I, the sensory issue, I was like, maybe? It's never quite, like... I think it's implied. It's heavily implied. It is. It is implied. But there's never, like, a, oh, he is on the spectrum. But, like, I would put I him... I also don't think it's, like... In, like, I would put him on a neurodivergent, though. Like, yeah. I would put that as, like... Yeah. Because he does come across as neurodivergent, on top of the fact that he does also have anxiety, which I guess go one and the same. Um, okay. Anything else? Mm. That's all I had. No, I don't think I, I didn't have else. many for this, to be honest. Um, I guess small town. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's kind of it. So this is book two in the Love Light Farms series, which is a four book series. Yeah. Um, And the last book in that series is about to come out. This is, yes, this is book two. This is Beckett's story. We did Love Light Farms in our Christmas reads last year. Although it's not really like Christmassy. It's definitely like a winter book. This one? No, no, no. Like Love Light. Oh, yeah. But this is a spring book. This yeah. is meant to be spring. Yeah, this is meant to be spring. And then I'm pretty sure the Lila's book is meant to be summer. Mm-hmm. And then Nova and Charlie is a fall book. Okay. But you do... So in this book, you meet Nova, which I... Because obviously you met Charlie in book one, and he's even mentioned in this book. So you mm-hmm. knew that Charlie is connected to the Love Light because he's connected to Stella. Yeah. But I didn't realize that Nova was going to be his sister. Well, yeah. Anyway, that's just a side I note. I assume you you won't know the per- the character if you don't read the other books in the series. Yeah, that's true. Because I haven't read book three yet, and I probably will. I don't own it, but... I guess I have to figure out how to get a hold of it now that they're not on. So this used to be on Kindle Limited. It's not anymore. She got picked up by a publisher last year mm-hmm. or like early 2023. 
No. Yeah. Because we read Love Light. Yeah, it was on Kindle on Kindle Limited, Limited yeah. last year. So she got picked up by a publisher early 2023, probably, and then all the books came out came off Kindle Unlimited. Yeah. So you do have to like either buy the book or get it from a library. Because yeah, you, you can't anymore. Also, I never clued in, really, um, until reading the book that Evelyn is uh, like BIPOC. Yeah. Like she's a person I don't of color. Know, I kept seeing people's like edits, and she was blonde in these edits, and I was like, mm. "Yeah, but she's supposed to be like um, she's supposed to at least have tan skin." Yeah, I got the sense that she was like maybe. Well, I guess it never really, it never did really say. Yeah, although her, what did her mom? I feel like I feel like it did vaguely mention what like what her nationality or her background was but i don't remember i just know that i do remember her being described as like she's not um white she's not white um that i remember okay so goodreads this is a 3.95 which is i guess pretty accurate that means some people are rating this as a four some people are rating this as a three with their like most people rating it as a four. Yeah. I do wish this, the Goodreads lets you give half mm-hmm. or seven fives. Um, okay. And this had 28,000 ratings, which I thought was lower than I was expecting because this book had a lot of hype. Yeah. Everyone talks about this one. And I don't know if it's just because they liked Beckett because he's cute mm-hmm. and the cats, but I liked Love Light Farms better. Personally. I mean, I found both of them quite difficult to get into. I don't know if I'm going to continue with the series, to be completely honest with you. Really? I, I, like, I literally, like, I struggled getting through this. I did struggle to get through this. This book did take me a little while to get into, but I would still, I'd still continue on because I loved Stella and Luca. Like, I've reread that book. Whereas, like, this one I just can't picture myself going back to, which is why I'm like, maybe I'll donate it or, like, bring it to a used bookstore. Because um, 28,000 ratings seemed low considering how much hype and how many times I saw this book on Instagram. Like, the amount of times this came up on Instagram when it was coming out mm-hmm. was so many. So I was kind of shocked that... I mean, 28 is still pretty big, though. Yeah, but, like, when we look at books like um, Book Lovers, I mean, yeah, but Emily Henry, is like, literally has a cult following. Like, there's a difference. Like, you can't, I, I don't really, like, don't compare anything to he- Emily Henry because, like, people will literally read it no matter fucking what. I guess so. Like, I'm trying like, to think what else. I mean, like, Tessa Bailey is, like, that's, she's an exception well, for like, sure. Well, like, compare it to, like, Icebreakers. Yeah, that's true. Because Icebreakers, I think, had less than this. No, it didn't. It didn't have less than this. Um, do I have icebreakers in my notebook in this one? I might actually. And we can, we can, um, oh yeah, we did. This had, okay, the icebreakers had over 300,000 ratings. Right, so not quite, not quite. <laughs> At 28,000 not quite. Um, trigger warning? I mean, none? I mean, anxiety. Yeah, I guess, ang- I guess anxiety. Because there's... Uh, uh, yeah, and they talk about how his dad got injured. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, that could be a trigger warning. Like, his dad had an accident that... Um, that... Paralyzed him. Yeah, from the waist down. Like workplace accident. So he's in a wheelchair. That's true. That did they did mention that. Okay, I'll give I'll give you that. So this book's about Beckett and Evelyn. I don't know how old are they. I don't know. Um, Beckett, I think is like twenty. I think she's twenty five. And then he must be twenty five ish. Because how old? Well, is Stella? Stella's twenty seven, twenty six or twenty seven. They're all like the same age. That's what I got. But I think Evelyn's like 
25. I would say this book, so these, this series, it is a series, a four. And you could read this as a standalone. Like, did you really need to read Love Light to get it? I mean, a little bit. But, like, also kind of not really because Stella and Luca are not really in this. Well, Stella's in it. Yeah, but not much. I mean, Luca is probably in this more than Stella is. I think it's, like, like the characters that get introduced. So like, True. You do meet Nova in this book, and you meet Charlie in book one. Well, and then they mention Charlie, so if you didn't read read book one, you're just like, who the fuck is Charlie? That's and true. And then also all the characters in the in the town. Like, how do you know? The, That's true, the, because the in this book, the sheriff and Mike the pizza are... guy are together, yeah. which was so cute. Um, That's true. Okay. So, I mean, like... Could you get away with reading you this without... You could get away with it, but it's probably not recommended. It's it's more enjoyable if you read the first book. Yeah. You read Love Light Farms. Okay. Um, okay, let's start with the cats. Why the cats? I don't... I thought... I, I couldn't quite tell if I thought it was endearing or weird. How is it weird? He has four cats. He does have four cats, he yeah. He also collects a duck. Yeah, the duck was interesting. He's just, like, hiding in his, like, greenhouse with, like, a little baby duck. And then the cats just adopt it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. Well, the cats are, like, still kittens, right? I picture. Because, like, they were, what, just probably just born in in Love Lights, mm-hmm. which is, like, November. So this is, like, March. So they're, like, maybe, maybe. five or six months. Yeah. I just picture, okay, you know, at the peony where you get the duck races and it's just like the slide with like a pool i just picture probably i'm surprised he didn't set that up in his house i'm i'm shocked i get i bet you i hope i hope there's a scene in the next book with lila where beckett has just set up like a little like fenced in run for the duck and it's got like a pool and a slide like i can 100 percent picture that oh yeah and he's probably gonna collect another pet oh 100 he's, he's probably gonna get more ducks for his duck so that yeah, he's not lonely because what's the duck's name? I don't remember. Um, Otis. Oh, yeah. Otis. That is right. <laughs> you have a good memory. I, I thought it was, like, weird that, like, the cats are named after the reindeers. Because yeah, because they, they found them in the found park. Them in the, like, Christmas decorations. But he names the duck after a song he used to, or, like, an, an artist, I think. Something like that. that. His dad used to play all the time. I also, I think it, I thought it was funny that the mama cat would just go riding in the tractor and she'd just be sitting in the passenger seat. Was she a mom? I thought she had, I thought it was like they're all kittens. No, no, no. There was the mom, then there was the kittens. So the mom, mom used to just like, and he was like, how are they getting out? Like there's no cat door in this house, but it's because one of them punched a hole through his wall (laughs) and covered it. One of his sister's. And that's yeah. how the cats were getting out. Well, no, it was a hole in the ceiling. In the, like, the attic. In the attic. So they've been using the attic. So the, they've been getting using the attic to get out. And so then he's like, I don't understand how the cats keep getting in and out when, like, I don't let them out. But they always end up somewhere on the farm. Like, they come home every night, but they always end up somewhere on the farm. Because, yeah, his one of his sisters is a dancer and, like, yeah. fucking was practicing for, in like, a recital attic, yeah. and then accidentally and then punched just, like, a hole. And stepped through the hole. Like the ceiling. Oops. Um, this is. I don't know. I just. It did take me such a long time to get into this. I just thought that it moved really slowly. I thought they were going to get together sooner. Because no. I feel like, I like f- when did they get together in Love Life Farms? I think they got together later in Love Life Farms. Yeah, but then I don't know. The thing is, though, is that in Love Life Farms, you only got Stella. So you never got Luca, even though you could tell that Luca was like invested the whole time. Whereas in this book, you got the dual POV. So you did get both. We forgot to read the back of the book. Well, you need to get to. Okay, to I'll get. pause and we'll read the back of the book. Evelyn St. James isn't the kind of woman you forget. Beckett Porter certainly hasn't. One incredible weekend in Maine, and he's officially a man distracted. He's not unfamiliar with hot and heavy flings. He knows how it goes. But Evie wove some sort of magic over him during their tumble in the sheets. He can't stop thinking about her laugh. Her hand pressed flat against his chest, her smiling mouth at his neck. 
and also her eyes and her legs. So when she suddenly appears on his farm as part of a social media contest, he is confused. He had no idea that the sweet and sexy woman he met at a bar is actually a global phenomenon of social media influencer Evelyn St. James. When she disappears again, Beckett resolves to finally forget her and move on. But Evelyn St. James has a problem. Feeling disconnected from her work and increasingly unhappy, she's trying to find her way back to something real. She returns to the last place she was happy, Lovelight Farms, and their tiny town of Inglewild. Inglewild? I don't know. don't know. It has absolutely nothing to do with the hot farmer she spent two incredible nights with. Nothing at all. I, Inglewild, I thought it was Inglewood. I don't know why. I, I think I changed that in my head because I just liked it better. Um, can we just talk about actually the social media, like, um, what company, what, I'm trying to think of, rep, Sway. What was it? What would that be called? Her, they're like representing they're like management. her? Yeah. They're like a and then they're like, here, basically like, let's send you to Coachella. She's like, that's not really my brand. And they they're were like, like, but you can get all these sponsorships. And she's like, um, I do travel. I just don't understand. And they're I like, I do travel and small business. And, and I just they're like, is this sponsored by a small business? And they're like, ah, oh, no, but you probably could find some while you're there. Yeah. And she was like, I'm not quite sure how this and her assistant is like sitting next to her and they're playing her this video where it's like just this woman who is clearly like high on something. And it's like, and then it's just this this woman like doing a lyrical dance, like clearly like fucked. And she's like, I don't quite think that this is where I should be. They also wanted her to dance more. Yeah, because that was trending. Yeah. And she was like, that's not also my brand. I hoped her friend got a book, actually. But, but, um, Josie. Yeah, but BK Borison already stated that that Business Casual will be the last book of the series. Probably because she wants to write other things. But, I mean, some authors can't let the let series yeah, lay. Yeah, so, some I mean, authors can't, but... BK Borison is not one of them, I guess. Um, so she basically like in this, so Evelyn doesn't like her job or she's not feeling connected to what she's doing anymore because she's basically, she went from doing it to uplift others and highlight small businesses like her parents' business to doing it for the likes. Mm -hmm. And she wants to get back and connected to why she's doing it not what it's giving her so she ends up back at the farm and she just shows up and i'm pretty sure the hotel lady lied and there was definitely rooms lied and like that the house she ended up renting at the end of the book was empty the whole time the whole time so they were just like well obviously you need to go stay at the farm with beckett beckett Oh, look, there's Beckett crossing the street right now. How convenient. Yeah. What are the odds? So I did think that was funny because this town is like, they're so, I thought it was so cute. I, I like the way that she, because you don't, you do get the town in Love Light Farms, but not as much as you do in this one, where in this book, you get a lot more of the personalities of the town members. With the exception of, like, you get less of the cop. But I guess that's because he's connected to Stella. But, like, the firefighters you get. And they're, like, filming some sort of, like, TikTok dance. Yeah, and she's, like... want to make the firehouse viral. Yeah. Or, like, the lady at the coffee shop who refuses to give, like, anyone she doesn't like good coffee. So if she doesn't like you, like, Stella gets decaf every time. Doesn't matter what she orders, she gets decaf. But she has, like, a special hazelnut latte that, like, only people she likes will get. So, like, you get to interact with those people more. And the, um, you also get the trivia thing where they're, like, super intense. And you're like, this is a lot. But I guess they don't have anything else to do. So, why the fuck not, I guess. Yeah. So you did get more of the town. I did like that because, like, it was so it was funny. She did make this book really funny with those aspects. 
Um, I did. I'm trying to think of where I want to start. I feel like I'm jumping around a lot. You are jumping around. Um, cause like, I found this book really hard to get into. So I feel like I would like, not like space out, but kind of where I started to be like, hold on a second. Was the fucking pond. scene? Yeah. Sam. Okay. That was when things started to pick up. Okay. So let's start, let's start there. So it was very icebreaker esque where I was like, well, they were already together at that point with the pond. And also, it they weren't together even, yet. That it was wasn't like even that that like dramatic, dramatic and icebreaker. The yes, it like inconvenienced them for like two chapters, but this was more of a. This felt a lot more natural than the icebreaker one because I remember being like, "What she I, fell?" Like, in. I on yeah, I honestly didn't think the icebreaker but, needed that scene, but yeah. But then in this book, it did make more sense because she falls in, and that's kind of the 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 starter of like Beckett being like, I like her and Evelyn being like, I could see us together. And then them kind of becoming more than friends, but not quite sleeping together just yet. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I was very like, what the fuck is happening? (laughs) Because yeah, she falls into the pond and I'm like, and I guess, I guess a pond would be fucking cold in March. I guess, but not that cold. Unless it was, like, a really cold March. I mean, okay. I I could see it being a lot colder than you think. But, like, I don't think she would be, like, on the edge of hypothermia, which is what was described. I think she would be cold. I think, her one, her jacket would definitely be super, like, wet, obviously, which is why she abandoned it. But, like, I don't think she was, she was on, like, the brink of hypothermia, like, to the point that, like, the ambulance showed up, and they're like, you gotta keep her warm, and he started a fire, and she had, like, tons of blankets on, and I was like, I think she would be, like, a little chilly, like, obviously, if she stayed in the lake longer than she did. But I think it's because she walked in her wet clothes, and just, like, continued to stay cold. But then again, like, I don't know, how big is this farm? Like, how far away was she from everything else? She, She probably wasn't. Because he said it was at least a 20-minute walk. So maybe? I mean, like, it is... I don't know. I've never fallen in a lake and had to walk. I also... in the middle of March. So. I also think... Although, okay, if you did a polar bear swim and then had to sit in your wet clothes for, like, 30 minutes... Yeah, but polar bear swims are done in, like, the, the brink of winter. You do a polar bear swim in January, December. Where is like, this supposed to take place? This is, like east close to maine probably so this is like they're like two hours away from new york like the so, state of new york i mean that'd be it, it would be well it i would mean be cold but it would i don't think it would be that cold i don't know i guess we never neither has been I new also, york so I, I also yeah i've never never really Cause, experienced new york in march so what the fuck do i know because i i did that was where i was like hold up a second she fell in the pond and that kind of started the catalyst of like them getting together which was really nice because like at that point then he asked her to go to that like trivia day and that was like then becca got drunk and that was like the beginning Mm -hmm. of them like being in a relationship was the trivia day because he yeah gets overwhelmed gets drunk because he can't deal with like the sen- like the sensory overload and then i okay my question is i he so he has these earmuffs that he wears <laughs> when he's at home with his family because they there's like what six of them yeah there's four kids yeah three sisters and him yeah so like he wears these like winter earmuffs like and they're like they're like bright pink and fluffy and fluffy to like help block out the sound. Like, I it's just like he's been using these earmuffs for years. So the fact that like they his family him to know trivia, they know he doesn't like, like he doesn't like sounds. I don't understand why no one in this family invested in like a pair of earplugs, like normal things, like normal ear because like, she like brought out like the cheap foam earplugs you can get at the like drugstore. Yeah, and he was like, oh my god, these are. This is like amazing. This is like 
the most groundbreaking thing ever and it's just like why did his family not think about that why 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 like yeah he's what he's been using these earmuffs for like almost 20 probably 20 ish years maybe not quite like definitely i think they did it when he was like a teenager so So like like maybe 10 years years. but yeah no one invested in some earplugs yeah i guess or even just like headphones yeah i don't know it's also like this family basically tricked him into going but but also they they knew that he yeah they doesn't he he doesn't like crowded spaces and then he would get really overwhelmed so i was kind of like why did you make him go he was gonna get overwhelmed Yeah, i don't understand the purpose of them tricking him to going because besides him with evie I like I don't understand what it actually achieved for them that he came out to trivia night. Also because his dad is all like also his, yeah, his dad into botany. That was like how Beckett got into it because his dad was a farmer. Yeah. So yeah, I wasn't quite sure. I also okay, so when they had to pick up all those trees, mm-hmm. I was expecting something to happen. I was like, something's gonna happen and they're gonna get an accident or something. But nothing happened. He just picked up trees and then came home. Yeah. And then she, their third act breakup was her going to take an interview back, not in New York, but like, I pictured it like, where was it that Luca was going to work? Uh, I don't know. It was like a town over, wasn't it? I pictured it something like that, where it was like, not quite New York, but like almost. So she like drove back was to she? to yeah. take the interview and like basically pack up some stuff and like close her uh break her relationship with that that. she didn't do that yet so she had um take the job interview yeah she went back her car or his his, and then her car broke down and then he was like she left yeah his he didn't even bother looking at her room to see all her shit was still there conclusion was i've been abandoned yes Um, (laughs) so she comes back he's mad they do their breakup the little third eye break up, break up, and then she goes to California to break up with Sway. Yes, and to like prove to him that she's gonna stay. But it, so at that point, because when when she leaves the first time, and she's gone for like maybe a day, and and it wasn't the only reason she was gone longer was because her car broke down. Yeah, and like, hey, good for you, girl. You change a fucking tire. I can't. So I like think in the scenario, I think I probably could do it. I did like Evie. Like, she was very self-sufficient. She, like, she's a, a character that I was like, okay, you're kind of kick-ass. But then, but then Beckett just comes home. She's not there. And then he's Her like. Her suitcase has been put away, literally in the other corner of the room. Like, her stuff is all still there. The only difference is that she's wearing her shoes and her jacket. Yeah. And her purse is gone because she's taken it with her. And he doesn't even bother to go upstairs and be like, I should see if there's toiletries in the bathroom. Or I should see if her suitcase is still here. He just assumes she's left me and then goes out to plant trees at 3 a.m. Yeah. But then because Stella put all those cameras in, because the- they get the alert. And then she sends Luca out being like, and he's like, bro, what are you doing? And Beckett's like, nothing. It's fine. And he's like, oh, fuck. Okay. So then they all show up to fucking plant trees at 3 a.m. And I was like, I thought that was cute because Luca shows up and is like, if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But like, we're here for you. And Beckett, of course, doesn't want to talk about it. And then he like calls in the cavalry and then like Lila, all the farm hands show back up. Like the whole crew shows up to plant trees at 3 fucking a.m. Yeah. They activated the phone tree. The phone tree. I still don't understand how the phone tree works, but I understand it's like a game of telephone where basically they yes, just call it is people. Yes, a game of te- telephone. Because wait, doesn't he get a call? Oh, no. Sh- she, she gets, gets a call? A, she gets a call being like, did you see Evie and Beckett making out in the greenhouse? And she was like, this is Evie. How did you get my number? And they're like, oh, you're part of the, farm, the, the phone tree now. The phone tree now. Welcome to town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was funny, but like, yeah, so then they're like planting trees because Becca doesn't want to talk about his feelings and he assumes she left, but really she's just like changing her tire somewhere in a town over. Yeah. (laughs) 
I thought that was really dramatic of Beckett. I was like, it was really dramatic of Beckett. I mean, like, that's my least favorite part is literally like, one, not only he jumped to the conclusion that she was obviously going to abandon him. Yeah. And then I think, like, on her part, just not even mentioning that she was taking a job interview or she was, like, talking to someone about taking a job interview. Yeah. Because she like, left a note, but then the cat stole it. Like, they literally, like, did not... Did they talk about anything? Talk about anything to do with her work because he was afraid that she was going to be like, I'm leaving. Yeah. And then she didn't want to bring it up because she didn't want to think about work because the whole point of her being in this town was to not think about, work. Not think about work. But like the fact that they, like they one, she could have fucking texted him. Did he not even read his text messages? She just tried to like, they tried to phone each other and neither of them picked up because obviously she's changing a tire. Yeah. And then he's ignoring her because he's mad. And then like just text, just send a text when he's on the road. Just be like, Hey, I got a job interview at town over. I gotta, I gotta go to that. I'll be back. Yeah, Probably or like you did. You are. Or even when her tire when she did get her tire fixed, when she got back to service saying, Hey, I left to do this, my tire like got a flat, but I'm on my way now. Yeah. As like an update. Like if this was done It did if seem this very was a like book done in like the nineties, maybe two thousands. This would make sense. When it would make sense. But like just fucking text people. Just yeah. Text. That's true. It did seem like yeah like a little a little far-fetched is the problem my least favorite part is the video that he made weird video (laughs) the weird video that he went viral and then because he's just some like he's so awkward and he basically like declares his love for her on social media and then posts it on tiktok yeah but he tags her in it so because her account gets tagged she sees it. But I also think if she's like a big social media star, I also think she probably gets tagged in shit all the time. Yeah. So like honestly, unless if he didn't go viral, do I think she would have found it? But maybe not. But her friend manages her social media, so her friend was the one that was like, You need to see this. Well, it was on the TV, it's the That was yeah, office. which was weird. Yeah. That was a weird scene. Um Yeah. Cause I that was how my least favorite thing was the the social media thing the like big declaration of love i just was like eh. and then also when she shows back up she rents the house doesn't tell him she's like back in town yes and then the sheriff's like you should go check out the house yeah, oh and yeah she's not there <laughs> and i was like what was the point of checking out the house if she wasn't there because th- th- she was she was actually on the farm. She was on the farm waiting for him to do her her, dec- her declaration and, and of he's, love. And he's sitting outside this house being yeah. like, I don't get I it. Don't, I don't understand why I'm here. Why did everyone tell me to come here? Oh, yeah. I forgot that happened. <laughs> because they're like, no, you need to go. They're like, you should go look at the house. And he's like, why the fuck would I do that? And they're like, you should go. You should just do it. Because you never... No, maybe maybe there's something going on and you need to find out. And they're he's like, Okay. So he literally sits there for like like forty five minutes just waiting and he's like, I don't understand. Why am I here? Nothing is happening. I forgot that, that happened. Yeah. And then she was in the field, like, where the fuck are where the fuck have we been? Like- yeah, we're and she's wandering around the farm being like, Where's Beckett? And they're like, I don't know. He's supposed to be back, but he he he's still in town. He went to town and he hasn't come back yeah, yet. Yeah, he went to town to go to groceries when he normally doesn't go to groceries at that time. And then he's just sitting outside of this house yeah. being like, I don't get it. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was I think okay, my my least favorite is yeah, that that scene what did you say your least favorite part was was just the whole like miscommunication on both their parts yeah yeah um okay what was your favorite scene um i did quite enjoy the town hall at the very beginning where it's just like dumb shit yeah it's just like you can't you can't like ram people's cars out of the the parking spot just because they're double parked (laughs) And the old lady's like, well, he shouldn't have been parked there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Or then Sel and Luca being like to the sheriff being like, oh, my God, does Mike like that? Is that why you said you said this announcement? And then the whole town and like they're basically there to stir shit up. I loved 
I, Luca and Stella are like my fucking favorite, and I love their little cameos in this. Luca's so cute. He shows up, he's like, Yeah, Stella told me that you were out here, and she yeah. gave me this cup of coffee for you. And he's like, Okay. And he's like, So you're not going to stop, are you? And Beckett's like, No. He's like, Great. And then when he's having his little, like, with the duck. Yeah, and they're in his. I think he's in his house, and they all come into his house, and he's like, "I thought I took the key away from you when you stole my pop tarts," and they're like, "We didn't. St- why would why would we steal your pop tarts?" It was Lila. Lila was like, "Why would I steal? I make. I could make pop tarts that yeah. are way better." And so it was like Charlie actually stole all your pop tarts. Um, and Beckett's like, "That makes more sense." And th- but he was also like, "Why is Charlie breaking into my apartment? <laughs> yeah, my house to steal pop tarts." <laughs> I or the part where they mentioned that like oh they had to put lights up in the fields like through the paths because one time Luca got drunk at Beckett's and then didn't make it home and Stella was like have you seen Luca and he's like oh he left like an hour ago but he was like drunk wandering around the farm because he couldn't find his way back yeah, in the dark and then also Stella used to sleepwalk <laughs> oh yeah I forgot they mentioned that I okay so my favorite part was the them showing up to plant the trees because it was like a you got a cameo of luca and stella and they're fucking my favorite but also like the town shows up and like beckett's so like emotional and broady and then they're like i guess we're fucking planting trees at 3 a.m here we go Mm -hmm. it's like dark out and they're all just like very tired okay let's do this and i thought that was just like i was so cute and i I like that was my favorite scene okay so what would your rating be? I give this like a four. You give this a. You just said that. <laughs> okay. Okay. You give this a four. Give this a four. Do you want me to lower it to a three point five? No, I just was. I was expecting you to like give this a lower rating. I gave this a three point seven five, but I rounded up to a four on Goodreads. I just like. I don't know. I was expecting to like this a lot more than I did. Mm-hmm. I think just because social media overhyped it. Yeah, I don't trust those inst- Instagram and book talkers. <laughs> the ins- the, the, the Insta girlies and the, the, the TikTok girlies. I can't trust them. Yeah, we, we've had a couple bad recommendations. Like the Death's Obsession. Dude. That was such a disappointment. The, the best thing about that book was the dedication. And that was it. <laughs> I know. Instagram did you dirty. <laughs> did me dirty. <laughs> um, Steam. I give this a two two yeah and then because once they start fucking they start fucking yeah but then and then you get the flashback stuff yeah kind of but it's i would say two um would you reread this probably not same i don't think i would either would you recommend this i probably if you want like small town i also think this is like this is labeled as a romantic comedy i think for somebody who's not a romance girly who's looking for a romance like let's say they've read an emily henry like like a book lovers and they're like i want something more romancy and like a little less chiclety like i would recommend the bk boris in books like i'd recommend this series for those people but they're pretty fluffy mm-hmm. okay um any last words on this book no um okay what are you reading right now i am reading uh assistant to the villain um uh, i don't i think it's like hannah something okay her last name is assistant to the villain okay by is that okay hannah nicole me is Mira? it y a no it's uh Consider new adults, but I'm pretty sure there's no fucking in this one. This oh, is like a trilogy. Oh, like like there's no sex because there isn't gonna like it's closed no, door. No, it's like a very no, it's very slow burn. Like okay, they're okay. I'm that was the question. The book and they're not together. <laughs> okay, that with the question that I had was, is it closed door or is it just that like it builds no, on the series? S- super slow pace. Okay. I'm pretty sure I read the only thing that happens in this book is like a kiss. Is it paranormal? What what is It's the- like ro- I think it's labeled romanticy. Oh. But it's like Is it fantasy though? Yeah, he's like he's like the villain in like 
like I don't know how to explain it. But he's like um there's like the king. Okay. She lives in like a small town and the villain's basically just like trying to make life very inconvenient for the king. So he's like a dragon. He has like he throws people out windows. He like oh. the first day or the first day that you you read of her at work. He has like like decapitated heads hanging from the ceiling because he got mad. Oh, okay. Do you like it? it- uh, it's actually like really funny. Okay. It's, like he has a frog named Kingsley and because his name is Kingsley, like King, he has a little crown on. And she was like, Why is he wearing a crown? And he's like his name is Kingsley. <laughs> okay. Because, okay, that was all over Instagram and like, all it's, over it's book really lists. It's funny, but obviously okay. if you want a steamy book, it's not. Okay. It's it's not going to be, it's not going to scratch your itch. It's a trilogy? Yeah. They, the second one, I think, comes out in like April. It, have you finished it yet? Not yet. I want to know if it ends in a cliffhanger. I don't think it does. I um, feel like it would have. I don't think it ends on a cliffhanger, but it definitely ends of like a to be continued. Okay. Because I had that on my list of things I wanted to read, but I was like, I kept seeing, you know, in Goodreads where it'll say like adult and it'll say like young adult. And no, I'm like, it's like new adult. I think it's labeled. Cause when it, when they list it as both, I'm like, what is it then? I think it's new adult. Also, I'm pretty sure this is Raylo fanfic. Like, like it when they described him, I'm like, shock me. I'm like, I sh- I'm sure you can find that somewhere. I'm sure you could like, I'm Google sure. It. Yes. I'm sure someone has figured out it is, but I, when they described him, I was like, Ooh, this is Adam driver. Isn't it? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. So would I like it? Um, as long as you're not looking for something spicy, but it is funny. I did. Uh, there are like definitely moments that I'm like laughing out loud on it. Okay. Okay. I have it on my list and I was kind of like, I put it on my to read list and then I was like, wait, is this YA? Like, I don't think I'm gonna like this if it's YA, but it was all over. Everyone that I was seeing review it were people who also read YA. And I was like, is well, this most YA? people do read YA, Aisha, do they? Um, you just, or is it just because it's popular and they read it because it's the book talk told them to? No, I've read some very good YA. I'm sure you have. Yeah, I lit. I why did I let you borrow my favorite YA series? If you're I'm gonna read it, gonna fucking read it. I will. I don't like YA, but I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna try if because you, I feel left out. If you complain to me that you're like this is so YA, then I'm never lending you anything ever again. I feel left out. I can't. I don't get any of the references on on Bookstagram because I haven't read. I also well, haven't the read. Thing is, it's like you go into YA expecting it to be new uh, new adult, but just like go into YA being like. This These are teenagers. YA. Like, there's no sex in it. Things are getting be progressed by not sex. Okay, not I I understand. Okay, I understand that, but I guess do I just you? I don't know. Do you understand that? I do. Anyway, what am I reading right now? Uh oh, I'm reading the Three Hearts Gip Getaway. What? I have to look this up. Do you know what you're reading? No. I do. It's um, it's an arc. I got an arc. It's from a local uh, Canadian author. It's her like debut novel. Uh, it's Luna Day. But I don't. What the fuck is it called? I'm pretty sure it's the Three Hearts Getaway. Three Hearts Getaway. Did you not mark it as? I did read. I mark it as. That's what I'm looking at right now. Oh, that doesn't help me. Three Hearts. Three Hearts Hideaway. I was close. <laughs> Three Hearts Hideaway by Luna Day. That's what I'm reading. I'm reading the arc of that. And I'm probably a third through it so far. And it's, I'm pretty sure it's a Y choose. That's where it's heading. Okay. And I don't know. I don't think it's a series. I'm pretty sure it's a standalone. Um, oh, I like the cover. The cover is really nice. I follow this artist on. I know. You've sent me her stuff before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a Y choose. It's a like thruple. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's the arc that I've got. The cover is so nice. It's very Valentine's day. Um, anyway, so far I'm liking it. I'm about a third way through. And so far it's, it's been, it's been good. It comes out February 1st, I think. So this, it comes out like two weeks after this episode's released. I'm pretty sure. So, so far it's a good book. So maybe keep your eye out. I th- I think it's going to go Kindle Unlimited. 
I feel like I read that in the stuff the author sent me when she sent me the arc. Um, but she's Canadian, so yay, go Canadians. It also takes place um, somewhere in Ontario. Uh, don't they all take place in somewhere in Ontario? Well, the other book I read recently See, took place in the island. They're all in Ontario. There's no Vancouver. Uh, that's a lie. I just read a book that took place in Tofino. Oh, she called it something different, but it's definitely Tofino. Well, you can't, you can't call, it, you can't say it takes place in Tofino if it, they can't call it Tofino. Well, maybe she wanted it to be like Tofino without calling it Tofino, because then she, because she wanted to cr- be able to create the town, but giving it Tofino vibes. But like, how many people go around Tofino? I mean, it, it's yeah. probably one of the more visited places in BC. I mean, yes. I immediately read this but and I was like, "This is fucking just Tofino." Like a small beach town. That's where it takes place. Small beach town. It, although this is very specifically Tofino because they mentioned like the surfing, and like the way it's described. I'm like, "This is Tofino." I mean, you can't surf in other places then. You BC. can, yes. Yes. But anyway. Anyway, I'm reading Three Hearts Getaway. Hideaway. Fuck. What did I do? I don't, now I have that in my head and I'm going to keep calling it that. The author would probably really love Three, it. If, if I got it right. An arc <laughs> and you're just like not even saying the right name. Three Hearts Hideaway. It's like, it takes place at a B&B in um, Ontario. Mm. It's in some small town in Ontario. <clears throat> so far it's good. But I'll keep you guys posted. I will release a review of it anyway because that's why I got the arc. But um, So you'll see that. That'll come out. The arc comes out February 1st. My review will come out in and around February 1st. But this episode will come out before that. So you'll be able to look for it in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, anyway, <laughs> do you have anything else to add? No. Okay. Um, that's it for today uh next week we are reading once a princess by joanna Lindsay. we don't do any historicals on this pod so because somebody I hate historicals i hate them you There's, know no i don't hate you, them that's we've, why. we've established just, a pattern that we can't read certain books because Yisha just doesn't like them i have very strong opinions on certain subgenres. um anyway we're reading once a princess by joanna Lindsay next week um please rate review and subscribe to our podcast it is super helpful when you do it helps people find us we're on instagram so if you want to engage with us that's kind of the place to be we also you can sign up for our newsletter the newsletter on our website gives you like blog updates it also is attached to the book box so if you just haven't heard if you if you're new here uh the modern romantic book box is also attached to us the spring box is launching february 15th i have to look at my calendar um but the announcements have started to happen so if you want to see what's going into the spring box the announcements have started to go up on the modern romantics instagram so you can check that out that the modern romantics instagram is linked in our instagram bio and we also will have a mix and match mini box going live right after this episode launches actually so stay tuned for that because if you liked our winter box but didn't want all of the items in the box we had some leftover stock so we just had to put it up in a mix and match so you can go in and mix and match what you wanted from the box for a lower cost so that will go up soon so stay tuned for that because that will come out right after this podcast and um, you also can use of course our podcast code on any of the box items or in the box things on the website which is sisters reading romance all capitals no spaces and i'll let you 10 percent off anything on the website from the book box otherwise um thanks for being here and we'll be back in yours next week bye